In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, St. Margaret, on this first Sunday in Lent. The text today may not seem like they all go together, but I assure you that they do. In our first lesson this morning, we have really what I call, uh, and, and, and certainly is up for discussion, but what I call one of the first salvific acts of God. You see, Noah and his family and two of each kind have been commanded to go into this ark and for 40 days and 40 nights there will be continuous rain and all on the face of the earth will drown. And how did this come about? It came about because God looked at his creation and he saw that people were just abusing people to no end. The violence was unimaginable. Even to the point where when you read just before this, you will see where God is so displeased. He even makes the statement, I wish I had not done this. That truly is a person who is upset. And you've heard me say that God is a creator and not a destroyer. That still holds true, but understand and clearly understand he will destroy evil. He will destroy evil. But look at the creative part of this, and this is what's important. Noah and Noah's family and two of every kind were to be placed in this ark so that when the evil had been destroyed, after 40 days and 40 nights, we get a restart. My computer people would say this is a reboot. And, and in a sense, it is, because we start all over again. All over again. It, 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 and it, it starts, it's, it really starts from the very beginning because if you notice, um, God causes, you know, this water to come from the chaos that had been before. You, you see, it was, you know, in the deep. It said it comes up from the deep. And remember at the very beginning of Genesis, it was the deep and a formless void. We've always heard that statement that, you know, it is the creation out of nothing. Now, I want to take it one step further than that. I don't believe it was the creation out of nothing because something was there. I believe it's the creation out of chaos that God created order. And in this order, everything was in its place, in its time. And what he allowed to happen because people could not act right. He allowed chaos to return for this brief moment. But we hear in that first lesson, he says, look, I will never ever do this again. Never will I allow water to cover the whole earth. I'll find other ways. I will find other ways to mitigate evil. We'll find other ways. And then Peter tells us, Christ suffered for sins once and for all the righteousness for the unrighteous in order to bring to God. What does that mean? Well, what that means is, is that, yes, God has had a, a brand new start with Noah and his family and two of every kind, but we still managed to find a way to not be kind to one another. 
to be violent to one another, to lie on one another, cheat on one another, kill one another, steal from one another. We still manage to find ways to do that. And it saddened God. It displeased God. Because you have to remember, and I'm going to keep saying this, you have to remember what God's purpose, what his mission for us is, is that we will be able to live with him in the time of his choosing forever. But we can't live with him with evil. With evil. And remember I said that I see evil as that broken relationship with God. God has set up a set of rules, ordinances uh, that bring us in relationship to, with him. And when we break those statutes, those ordinances, those rules, the Decalogue, we break that relationship with him and we have sinned. And he said the wages of sin are death. Not necessarily so now with the presence of his son, Jesus Christ. For we see in the day's gospel that at his baptism, the first announcement that this is my son, the very next thing that happens is, is that the spirit descends upon him like a dove and immediately sends him out into the wilderness, undeveloped place. And in the wilderness, there he meets Satan. And I say meet because he knows who Satan is, and Satan knows who he is. And for 40 days and for 40 nights, Satan is going to tempt Jesus with every means by which he has. Let us not forget that in Greek, the devil's name means deceiver. So he's trying all these deceptive acts with Jesus. Now, Mark is not as uh, a prolific in that explanation of the trials that Jesus is going through in the wilderness as the other gospels are, but nonetheless it's important to note in that gospel it says that he is tempted. He lived with the wild beasts and the angels and the angels attended to him. What's also important is what we don't read but we know that the devil was not able, was not able to turn Jesus from God. That is, he was not able to cause Jesus to have a broken relationship with God. And the importance of that is, is that if he is going to take on all of our sins, and he does. He takes on those sins of temptation and overpowers those sins of temptation. He does not yield to them. He overpowers all those temptations and is successful in thwarting the, God, the, the devil in all of his deceptive ways, showing us an example to follow, for us to know who to call upon when we find ourselves in those same positions. When we find ourselves not being able to withstand the wails of the devil, we know that we can call upon the Lord and say, help me, Lord, and the help is there. Be with me, Lord but he never left us. Guide me, Lord, but he's always in front of us, leading the way. We but to open our ears to hear and open our eyes to see 
stop being lame and walk in his ways. For look at what he has done. He has taken on unrighteous for the unrighteous to make it righteous. That is, he has taken on this lot, this human lot, so that he can be that example of what God wants us to do. But more importantly, being able to overcome the wiles of the devil so that when we ask for forgiveness, that forgiveness is given because he's already taken on all the sins of the world and on top of that, taken on all the death for those sins and has overcome death such that now, even though we will die a physical death, we do not die or need to die a spiritual death, thereby accomplishing that goal which God has for each and every one of us, and that is for us to be with him in his kingdom when he says it's time for this to occur. When we go through these 40 days of Lent, that we have started a couple of days ago on Ash Wednesday. Let us not forget that we face these times of trials and tribulations and temptations. When I do uh, pre-cana, that is pre-marital counseling, I, I, I warn couples that, uh, you know, there, there was that time when you wanted to speak to a certain person and they wouldn't give you the time of day and now that you found Mr. or Mrs. Wright and everything is progressing nicely, now that person wants to constantly be around you, be with you. Uh, that is temptation. That's the work of the devil. He's trying to make you, to deceive you. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. it. It's when you're at work and you want to take credit for something that you did not do, but you see yourself in a position where you can make it look like it's what you did, bearing a false witness that would certainly promote you into a higher position don't do it. Please don't do it. You, you, you might find yourself in a position where, oh, he doesn't understand me, and he does understand me, so I'm going to spend my time with him. That's not the vow that you made when you got married. We all, in ways that are imaginable and unimaginable, in ways that are imaginable and unimaginable, convicted of some ill, but because of what Jesus shows us what and how to do in his temptation in the wilderness, that undeveloped place. Because of that, none of us stands condemned. We may be convicted, but we're not condemned because of what Jesus has done for each and every one of us. So during this Lenten period, let us constantly reflect on the gift, hear that, gift 
of grace that God has given for each of us. And let us strive to constantly improve upon ourselves. No, we will not be perfect, but we can work toward perfection. And when we realize that we have fallen, let us realize that immediately and immediately ask God for his forgiveness, for it will be forgiven and forgotten so that we can continue on that path toward the promised land. God has found the most effective way, the most effective way for our salvation, and that's through his son, Jesus Christ, who took on all of our sins, died for all of our sins, and rose again so that we would be able to be in a right relationship with his Father, our Father, God, in a time of his choosing. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.